Up next on Coastal Today, CCU engages in local economic development. Two students work to promote bike safety on our roadways. And a musical theater graduate gets physical in an off-Broadway production. Now your host, Robin Russell. Coastal Carolina University has a huge effect on the economy with just under a half a billion dollar impact statewide. Coastal is also very engaged in economic development in the area. CCU research economist Rob Salvino is here with business student Alessandro Manino to tell us how they're involved. Welcome both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Uh, first of all, Alessandro, congratulations on a great internship. Tell me a little bit about that. Yes, I'm currently an intern for CoWork MYR which is a co-working space in uh, Myrtle Beach. Um, the way I got involved is last semester, they had uh, this competition called Startup Weekends all over the country, all over the world, which is basically a three-day weekend where on the first day, everyone goes on stage, pitches their idea. There was about 70 people that attended. And then from those ideas, you pick the top six and you build a team. So if you're a business guy, you're gonna ask for a web developer or a web designer and it's mostly like tech scale ups. It's not gonna be like a small business. It's companies that had the potential to become big companies. So I was part of that and on Sundays when then you pitch it to a, uh, an audience of uh, judges and my team actually ended up winning. So from that I got involved with coworkers. Coworkers are the ones that put it together. Yeah. And then I needed an internship for the spring. So I contacted Mike Schroll who's one of the founders of Cowork MYR and asked him for an internship and he had the availability, so. Oh, yes. Well, congratulations. <laughs> Rob, um, we have this kind of caliber of student coming out every day, do we not? We sure do, yeah. Um, right. In the Wall College of Business, it is um, excellence that's moving us along. Um, speaking of excellence, do you have any kind of report on the excellent economic outlook, maybe? Uh, Myrtle Beach is looking <laughs> strong. Myrtle Beach actually looks stronger than, than the state on average, you yeah. could say. Um, even possibly than the nation, there's been a lot of uh, positive growth in back-end building, in real estate, and, and other things cropping up. Uh, the development efforts of, of the region have, have been successful, so uh, things are certainly looking strong here. Um, Alessandro, it being involved with the, the co-work Myrtle Beach, which is also a business that um, telecommunicating, um, I don't know what you call, but people can come on vacation and, and rent a space and work out of this space. Um, Businesses like that coming in, Rob, do you s forecast more of that? Right. All over the nation, it has certainly uh, been a growing uh, thing for, for decades as people don't necessarily need the office space that they did years ago. In fact, uh, office pay space per worker has been falling over the, previous, over the uh, last few decades. And so you certainly have more of that. And technology companies are finding that they don't have to be located just in Silicon Valley or Austin, Texas or Boston. Uh, there, there are many places and, and communities all over the, the country and world need these types of skills. And so what CoWork did was brought these types of people together who were already here for the most part and then brought, gave them a space that they would be attracted to and it's really filling up quick. And it's, it's a pretty neat place. We have uh, a few faculty and staff that go down there actually and share some time. Even uh, the Economic Development Corporation, MBRDC, sends some people down there. Uh, I've talked with a lot of consultants in the area in real estate that send people down there every now and then. So it's, a, it's an energizing place and uh, a lot of ideas flowing there. Very interesting. Um, give us a little bit of a forecast of um, maybe the summertime. Is it too early? Uh, well, summer, we're, we're waiting to see what's happening this winter. If, right. if some of the numbers that have been uh, below on a national uh, scope, below what was forecast by some, some national economists, uh, trying to see if that's just weather or, or if there is something to that, uh, if, if, if things are slowing a little bit on the, on the national front. But, but here locally, uh, things have been growing and it looks like we're at a pace in terms of real estate development, yeah. uh, back in residential particularly, where we were back in say, before 2002 uh, and it matches our population growth and so that's a good sign we want to see it in step with population and we want to see prices in step with income yeah. which it seems to be right now well when you get some more of those figures you'll come back and visit us right sure will okay <laughs> rob it's always a pleasure and congratulations alessandro and thank you success. appreciate it up next on coastal today find out how our music preferences are shaped by current events and later two students team up to help save the lives of bicyclists in our community
office is a movie set, and my acting career began at Coastal Carolina University. Begin your path to prominence today by applying online. Coastal Carolina University delivers a $300 million impact to our local economy, is responsible for the existence of more than 4,000 jobs, and CCU students, faculty, and alumni positively impact our community's quality of life each day. So no matter your color, the power of teal is undeniable. Learn more about CCU's significant community impact at coastalconnects.com. Your community, your university. Welcome back to Coastal Today. Each year, faculty member is recognized for demonstrating outstanding teaching and for fostering student learning through scholarship and citizenship. It's called the HTC Distinguished Teacher Scholar Lecturer Award. This year's recipient is CCU psychology professor Terry Pettyjohn. And congratulations, Terry. Thank you very much. Um, we've had you he on here several times about your intriguing research, and now you're being honored for it. Mm -hmm. Tell us about this award. Yeah, this, this award's really special to me. It combines two of the things that I obviously love doing, which is teaching and also the research side. And I think I do a good job in the classroom of trying to incorporate things that I've done research-wise and get students in involved with doing these different kinds of research projects and, and seeing how they're interconnected, how creating this new knowledge is something that's really important as they move forward. Now, you will speak um, at the CCU Celebration of Inquiry, and um, that's March 31st at 7 p.m. at the James Johnson Auditorium. Tell us about what the presentation is going to be. Yeah, I've given a lot of thought to this presentation and, and ever since the award was announced and I was identified, I've, I've been thinking about what can I talk about and how, how am I going to put this together. I think I'm going to focus a lot on uh, the music research that I've done, how our social and economic um, conditions actually influence the kind of music preferences that we have. And so I'm going to set that up by talking a lot about some of the other social preferences that we have, what other researchers have found in terms of how the economy and other factors of threat influence the things that become popular in our culture. Oh, you are so fascinating with your research. Now you have to give me just a little piece yeah. of what that presentation is going to be. Sure. One of the main things that we find is that uh, when social and economic conditions become more difficult, yes. that we actually gravitate towards the more serious, meaningful types of songs. So the, the kind of like the Hey Judes and the yes. Bridge Under Troubled yes. Water, those kinds of hits become really popular. They really resonate with people at those times. Um, how fascinating. That will be a lecture for no one to miss. Um, Terry, you're still continuing research. Um, tell me about some of your newest research. Yeah, Dr. Eastman, uh, Dr. Jason Eastman in sociology and I have been looking at actually country music preferences. And we find over social and economic conditions that those actually vary a little bit different from pop music. And we argue kind of based on the, the whole basis of, of who's actually consuming this kind of music right. that it, it follows a slightly different pattern. And so we're looking at things like the lyrics and also the, um, the chords, the keys in which the music is written in. And those are a little bit different from the pop music in terms of what's popular and when, when they're actually popular. He'd be a great guest to have in. He could, he could really talk about that uh, better oh, than and I you, could. And you, you also spoke before, you're doing some um, students and their relationship or their um, outlook on psychology right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of the things that we do uh, with a lot of our classes is some kind of assessment at the beginning of classes. And so we've been looking at students' attitudes towards psychology as a science. And we've been giving that out in different classes. Yeah. And so a lot of people in our department have been contributing to this. And we find that when students participate in a research methods type of class where they actually do a research project, mm -hmm. that their attitudes towards psychology as a science uh, improves, that they think of it as more of a science and they understand the dimensions that go into actually making the research because of that. Um, so, Terry, when, when our economy turns back up, mm -hmm. 
Um, will you continue your research on the pop culture and economy and how they interreact? Yeah, you know, it, so it goes the opposite way too. So when times are actually good, we actually prefer these more upbeat dance yeah. types of songs, things that with uh, more beats per minute, uh, more celebratory kinds of music, and those are things that, that we look for when times are good because we want right. to celebrate more. Right. And it's just a different um, message that's being sent in that music and, and that we also want to consume. So. Uh, well, you're always fascinating. We love your research, and we are so excited about your lecture. Congratulations on that award, and I will Thank see you. you on March 31st. All right. Looking forward Thank to it. You. Thank you. Up next on Coastal Today, you'll meet students who want to change a dangerous situation on area roadways. Find out what they're doing, and later, the off-Broadway lights shine on the Coastal Theater graduates. We'll be right back. This is a movie set, and my acting career began at Coastal Carolina University. Begin your path to prominence today by applying online. Coastal Carolina University delivers a $300 million impact to our local economy, is responsible for the existence of more than 4,000 jobs, and CCU students, faculty, and alumni positively impact our community's quality of life each day. So no matter your color, the power of teal is undeniable. Learn more about CCU's significant community impact at CoastalConnects.com. Your community, your university. Welcome back. When a 20-year-old international student was hit while riding her bicycle last year, the tragedy struck a chord with two students. CCU students Dory Sanders and Chelsea Thomas decided to take action to help improve how international students become oriented with the area when they arrive. They're developing a bicycle safety public service announcement, and they're both here today to tell us how it will work. Congratulations to both of you for such a wonderful project. Um, explain why you became so passionate about this. Well, we know it's a problem in the area and we really want to make the roads safer, especially for pedestrians and bicyclists. But we also want to educate them so that they follow the rules of the road too. So Dory, how did you brainstorm and how did you start? Well, it, this is a tremendous project. It has taken mm -hmm. lots of planning. Um, we've developed um, surveys and this PSA that we've just done. So it's taken a lot of brainstorming and a lot of planning um, to, to come up with this project and to, to get all the logistics right and that kind of thing. So <clears throat> yes, it's taken a lot of extra time and mm -hmm. effort, um, but it's a really great project for, for us to do. And like Chelsea said, it's a, we know that this is a problem in the community. So I guess when you you know, when you say brainstorming, um, yes, there is a lot of brainstorming yeah. with it, but um, we know that, that this is so much of a problem that, I mean, it, something has to be done. So developing these things, the PSAs and the survey, yes, it's a hard thing to do, but um, once we've got it, we've got it. First, we want to um, show you how to check your bike. Tell me a little bit about the PSA and what it is, for air. is educating us about. Well, the PSA focuses on a bicyclist and not pedestrians, and it focuses on how to safely ride your bike in traffic and also what a bike needs to be safe, like reflectors and make sure your brakes work and things like that. And this PSA is not just for international students, but for everybody, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, it can be used for, for other projects for us in the future. So if we want to develop a PSA for Coastal's campus, for right. instance, we can use parts of that to, for that PSA as well. 
Um, we want to develop a community PSA as well. Mm -hmm. So that, that will be more based on the, the community as a whole, the infrastructures that we have in Horry County. So that will have to be probably a, a, a completely different yeah. PSA, yeah. but it can definitely be used. This foreign student one can be used for future PSA. Now, um, I, are we getting ready to have a bicycle rally as well coming around the corner? Hopefully. <laughs> yes. <laughs> April yeah. 9th, um, hopefully 5 to 7. We kind of want to go around the Quill Creek neighborhood. It's about a three-mile loop, and we're hoping to do a competition race and a leisurely ride and then end in extended parking and kind of have like a carnival type right, event. Right, right. Oh, how wonderful. Yes, food. Uh, do both of you ride bikes? <laughs> she rides a lot more than I do. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, I ride, but I'm not a serious rider, but any time that the weather's nice outside and the tires are pumped up, um, I will definitely go out for a ride. Um, but Chelsea, she'll <laughs> go driver. out a little while, but <laughs> for a little while, but um, she But it kind of helps us because yeah. I know the motorist side and she knows the bike list side. Oh, how mm -hmm. wonderful. So you made a great partnership with yes, that. Yes, that's mm -hmm. been the, the beauty of this project is she, like she said, she sees things from yes, the motorist yes. side mm -hmm. and I'm the bicyclist over here, you know, <clears throat> so. Well, congratulations on a project that we needed. Um, and congratulations for the success of you two in the Swain Scholars Program. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. When we come back, we'll catch up with a CCU theater graduate who is performing in New York City and making quite a name for himself in the theater circuit. This is a movie set, and my acting career began at Coastal Carolina University. Begin your path to prominence today by applying online. Coastal Carolina University delivers a $300 million impact to our local economy, is responsible for the existence of more than 4,000 jobs, and CCU students, faculty, and alumni positively impact our community's quality of life each day. So no matter your color, the power of teal is undeniable. Learn more about CCU's significant community impact at CoastalConnects.com. Your community, your university. Ryan Schaefer earned his Bachelor of Fine Arts degree in musical theater here at CCU. While studying, the classes in physical theater captured his attention. And once he hit the streets auditioning, his physical theater talents paved the way for his first role in an off-Broadway production. Ryan came back to CCU recently for a visit, and we took a few moments to interview him. Joining me now in Wheelwright Auditorium from the 2012 BFA Musical Theater class, Ryan Schaefer. Hello, Ryan Schaefer. Hey, how are you? I'm great. And Good. Um, you're great. I am. I hear you're doing <laughs> really well in New York City. I am, I am. Tell me what's going on. Um, first of all, you're here to visit um, other seniors that are in their final show mm -hmm. before their showcase. Mm -hmm. And last time I saw you was right after your senior showcase. Right, right. And you were on your way to New York. Mm -hmm. And um, you did land a very good role in an off-Broadway show. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk a little bit about your path after you saw me and to where we are now. Okay, uh, well, after I had settled into New York, uh, I actually spent a lot of time just uh, getting acclimated to the city and falling in love with New York, which I think was very important. And now I'm just happy as a clam. And then um, I just kind of a right place, right time scenario. I went to this audition for uh, a show called Fuerza Bruta 
And uh, after a week and a half audition process, I was offered a contract with them and found myself off Broadway. So. And how long did you work with them? Uh, I worked with them uh, for about five months. Uh, the show closed shortly after its uh, six year anniversary on January 5th. Uh -huh. And so now I've kind of been sitting on my hands waiting for this new show to happen. Uh, it's called Wyra and it should be uh, I think April 15th is a projected date for right. the first show, and uh, just hoping that they offer me a contract for that one, too. Um, so what was it like, your first job in New York was an off-Broadway job? Yes. Um, it <laughs> was. <laughs> How does it, one do that? It, 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 like I said, it was kind of a right place, right time scenario. You ask any professional actor, uh, moving to New York for eight months and then landing an off-Broadway job, that's almost unheard of. It's, it, I was incredibly lucky, counting my blessings and everything. Uh, but it's just, it's so exciting. Uh, I, I've been telling everybody here, all the, all the other students and everything, that it's just nice to, to know that what we've been doing for four years, it, it like actually <laughs> happens. Like some people are actually met with success and it's just so refreshing uh, to, to know that it's not all in vain. Right. And Ryan, this was not just a normal musical theater show. Mm -hmm. This show, um, <laughs> I have seen several times, it's one of my favorite shows. I didn't get to see you in it, but maybe I'll get to see you in, in the next in the new one. one. But talk a little bit about the show itself and the physically <laughs> taxing yeah. um, amount of body that it takes right. and mind. Yeah, uh, Fuerza Bruta is uh, it's an Argentinian show and it's best described as a physical theater piece. Uh, the majority of the show we are dancing um, there's no there's no spoken lyric there's no singing in it uh, but like I said mostly dancing but uh, on top of that to add to the uh, the arduous uh, physical nature of the show uh, one of the the male parts it's called the corridor or the running man and we get tossed on a treadmill uh, and <laughs> we uh, we're on this treadmill at about three different speeds we have a walk a jog and a run but the run is like a dead sprint like as if you're gonna get murdered by somebody you have to be running that fast and on top of that, we're breaking through walls of cardboard boxes. It's raining on us. Uh, we have to pretend to get shot halfway into it. It's very strenuous. Uh, uh, they, they continually remind us that we need to be taking care of our bodies and feeding ourselves and just being on top of everything. And it was, it's key. Coastal Carolina University is kind of just breaking onto the mm -hmm. scene in New York. Mm -hmm. um, with your class being the first class, we've got another class that's there and a, a third class that's getting ready to go for mm -hmm. a showcase. Um, you know, if you had to tell somebody, when they ask you where you go to school, you know, what do you explain? Where what, uh, I, what do you I, say about I, Coastal? I will usually say uh, that it's a school that is growing exponentially. Yeah. And uh, because when I first came in, I think I, there were less than 100 people, I would say like 75 people in the program maybe. And by the time I had left, uh, there were close to 200. Right. So we've, we've been growing so much and I've seen all the professionals, uh, the professors and everything with, uh, with their history um, as an actor, uh, which has contributed. And it's just like, Coastal is not unprepared. We, we know what we're doing here, and obviously. Um, and it's, it, I, just, I, I keep telling people to just watch out for Coastal because, like I said, we're growing fast and soon we'll, we'll take New York by storm. Um, now, <laughs> um, you're seeing some of your good friends tonight mm -hmm. um, in their last show at right. Coastal. Um, what kind of advice do you have for them when they leave here and, the, and if they want to go to New York? There, there were two nuggets of, I, I, I've already run into most of them uh, just like throughout the day, but uh, there are two nuggets of wisdom that I've been trying to instill in each of them. Uh, first, wherever you end up, whether it be New York or elsewhere, you have to fall in love with where you are. Um, because I have seen a lot of my friends in New York right now that are uh, going through the, the regular actor grind of uh, audition after audition after audition and nothing coming of it. And they're all just so miserable just because they haven't fallen in love with the city. Right. And it's key. It is so important to make sure you're happy or else it's not as easy to brush everything off. Um, <laughs> and the second thing that I, I would love to tell people is just keep going. It happens. It happens. Like I said, it, everything that we've been doing here, it happens eventually and you just need to keep on that grind and eventually it's going to come to you. Hey, did you fall in love with Coastal? I did. I did. That, hence why I'm back here. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I can't leave. Yes. Right? yes. I can't leave. Um, what was it about Coastal that you fell in love with? 
Uh, Not just the theater, just coastal. Uh, originally, I came here for the opportunity uh, because I had gotten accepted into Boston Conservatory as well, and I just, uh, it was more the, it was, I liked the attention that I was going to get. Uh, the student to teacher ratio was so much smaller here than it was there that I got the attention right. that I wanted. Um, and, but on top of that, it, it, there's, there's a certain, uh, the southern charm, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's very appropriate, uh, of, everybody here just kind of made it a very warm and welcome environment to uh, a profession that is not warm and welcome, <laughs> but it, it was a nice little transition and an ease into it. So. Um, but you're not afraid. No, never. <laughs> not afraid. Not afraid of that world of, yeah. of being put down or, or not, you know, very well embraced when you don't get a part. Right. I mean, you're, you, you, well, I remember the uh, acting one class with you. The first, uh, one of the first things you said was, "If you can imagine yourself doing anything else, get out of this class Absolutely. and go do it." Uh, because you know, it, it, it's kind of sad to say it, but seventy percent of the people that go into the uh, into the theater business are met with failure just across the board, and it's very intimidating to to face those odds. But when when I when I landed Fuerza and when I got to perform with them, it, you just get reminded of why you're doing it and it just being able to perform and just seeing all those smiling faces and everybody just so grateful for the things you're doing, it totally pays off in the end. This period. Brian Schaefer, um, thank you for talking with us of today. Course. I'm one of my favorite students <laughs> ever, ever, ever. We knew that you would do well. Thank you, um, thank you baby. There's more of Postal today when we come back. This is a movie set, and my acting career began at Coastal Carolina University. Begin your path to prominence today by applying online. Coastal Carolina University delivers a $300 million impact to our local economy, is responsible for the existence of more than 4,000 jobs, and CCU students, faculty, and alumni positively impact our community's quality of life each day. So no matter your color, the power of teal is undeniable. Learn more about CCU's significant community impact at CoastalConnects.com. Your community, your university. Coastal Today would love to hear from you. Send an email with any comments or suggestions to Coastal Today at coastal.edu. Thanks for watching Coastal Today, an inside look at Coastal Carolina University.